staff of the uh, museum, parents, ladies and gentlemen, in particular students. Thank you, thank you all for coming. Eh? Thank you all for coming. Um, my apologies for being late. Um, I was at another function at that got late at St. Joseph Secondary School. Eh? But um, amazing you are willing to um, come during your break and uh, pick up something outside your formal uh, education or formal curriculum. Eh? Thank you very much for coming and I'm sure you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy every moment here. This will make you better citizen. Um, I'm happy, as I said, that you have taken the initiative to register and join um, us in this week's school holiday program and activities at the Fiji Museum. This is the first workshop this year that we have organized for children and youth on Itokai culture through traditional handicraft skills practical which will connect you to your past, present and future. What we also intend to do, and I'll be talking to our director, is to organize this outside Suva. At least one in West, uh, one in um, Lambasa in each term. So this is first term holiday, we can have another one in second term holiday, but one there and one in Lambasa. So three in every term holiday is the three districts so that we open up to children who can't come uh, this far. Eh? So your friends in schools uh, outside the uh, north in the Northern Division and Western will also have opportunity to come and attend this workshop there, closer to their home. So, Director, there's something that we need to do. Now, you may have seen that the, the traditional mats and Masi still have a function in Fiji. If you have visited a number of programs, you'll find uh, mats feature a lot and we use it a lot. Uh, we find a lot of comfort in that. You also find Masi being used um, at different, different kinds of functions, particularly traditional ceremonies. Um, uh, and it is a very important role in uh, birth ceremonies, in weddings, um, uh, funerals, uh, and uh, house decorations. And uh, I have got something at my home as well, and I have a lot of, lot of affinity to traditional artifacts. And you'll find uh, collections from as far as South Africa at my place. You know, wherever I've traveled, I tend to bring those. Once I was caught at, um, uh, I think, Perth Airport bringing something from South Africa. And they promised me that they will test it and then um, give it, send it back to me in Fiji. I knew they would never send it back to me. This is probably 10 years now, I never got it. But uh, I gambled. I declared it, I gambled that I might get it through. Didn't get through, I lost some money, but at least I, I tried. And uh, that, is, that is something that I value very closely. Uh, natural, traditional artifacts, and I do collection, and you'll find a lot at my place. Uh, students, ladies and gentlemen, the skills are, that are needed to be practiced and they continue to otherwise will find that no one will know how to weave or how to um, uh, make pottery uh, or produce masi uh, if you don't uh, try to uh, provide this kind of training through different means. You know, you don't find uh, professors of pottery making or professors of weaving. You won't find it. But what we need to do is uh, identify those experts in the villages, etc., and give them adjunct positions. Adjunct positions in institutions. They can be adjunct at, at, at the museum. They can be adjunct at the uh, Department of Heritage and Arts. So that is something that we want to do over the next three to four years, is uh, create part-time positions for adjunct fellows. Adjunct fellow in mat weaving. Adjunct fellow in pottery making. And it's not very expensive. You know, we can uh, pay them for an hourly rate, and uh, they'll come uh, four hours a day, they'll come and do some weaving here. There might be you know, only five people attending. We're perfectly fine with that. The enormous benefit we derive out of that particular contribution from that unrecognized and untapped talent out there is enormous. Okay? So, uh, Director Museum. Uh, Mary, uh, we, were to, we want to establish these positions. These are uh, part-time temporary positions, adjunct fellows in different areas. So let's work towards that. Money is not an issue. We have the money in the ministry, so we'll provide that. So identify me at least 10 areas. 10 areas and 10 expertise that we will we want to. We can also place them in, um, uh, in, in outside Suva, in our Lotoka district office, and we can use our infrastructure uh, in the schools to where they will do this. 
They can operate out of Natambua's FNU campus, or they can operate out of uh, our Natambua High School. In Lambasa, they can operate out of uh, Lambasa College. So uh, we will provide the infrastructure, but we need to identify these people. Eh? So we need to see uh, these activities throughout Fiji, not only. Uh, sometimes the problem is oh, we only tend to um, uh, organize activities in Suva, uh, and we kind of in the process ignore those who have a lot of uh, interest in this, but are uh, deprived of because they can't come closer to the center. So we need to go to the periphery. Um, so, uh, children, it's a pleasure to see you all here. I, I must say that there's exciting opportunities out there, and while market is a limiting factor towards you deciding whether you can have this as your um, area of development and area where you will pick your future, I must say that you also have to determine uh, and, and push the market to be bigger than what traditionally, traditionally we see. The traditional boundary of the market that we used to see is Fiji only. I suggest that you kind of see the entire Pacific and the world as the market. And therefore, if you want to, you are passionate about and have interest in, in developing your talent in this area, go for it. Go for it, we'll facilitate, and you can, uh, make a future out of this. Sometime back, four decades ago, people were saying, you know, uh, if you're playing soccer or rugby, they'll say, will soccer give you food? Will rugby give you food? Stop it. Come back home and you know, start, get, pick up your books and start doing formal training. Now, sports has become, become an industry on its own. Sometimes back, music was seen as such. Music is an industry on its own. Unfortunately, we haven't done justice in valuing the music industry in Fiji. I can do it, or some of our economists can do that. I, I suggest we do that. Similarly, on the um, on, on sports, value the sport in industry and work out its linkages to the rest of the economy. Amazing, amazing. The simple dimension is how remittances flow in through our sporting personalities outside Fiji, and how these remittances are channeled through. An amazing impact you find is that these remittances flow through in the rural and subsistence economy and raise productive capacity there and also raise living standards there. But someone has to do a formal study to work it out. So similarly what I'm saying is that this work is something that can also provide that kind of significant contribution to the economy and also provide livelihood. It's just that we in the leadership of these institutions have to provide the framework. We need to provide the framework so that this industry can flourish, people can come in, acquire the skills and talents. So um, very soon we'll be doing it, doing that. I'll be talking to our staff, our directors, how we can establish the framework. Yeah? So thank you very much for coming. I think we will take stock of the current uh, participants. We will want to uh, follow through. If we can deliver at least five out of this lot who would you know, develop this talent and pursue through, I think we have done justice. Yeah? Thank you very much, and uh, it's my uh, pleasure to um, uh, declare this uh, workshop uh, open and uh, wish you all the best in, over the next two days of your uh, learning experience. Eh? Uh, so please be passionate about this and attend to the expertise that the trainers will provide. Thank you, Dr. Andanabar.